The big budget bill that funds state government is on the Montana Senate floor on Thursday, and it's possible that when it passes, that version could be the final form. But as usual, not everyone is pleased with the product at this point or the process. Mike Dennison gives us an inside look at what it's like to be on the outside looking in for one proposal. The state's $10 billion two-year budget is close to being completed. But right now, among other things, it doesn't include a requested increase for rates paid to those operating assisted living homes for the elderly. Home operators and their supporters say without this increase, they can't afford to take more state-funded poor residents, who then could end up being in a more expensive nursing home or the state hospital. They have to have a place to go. They have to. We want to be one of those, but we need help. And this is where we come back to you guys. This is where we need help, and that's all we're asking. But that help costs $3 million in state funds over the next two years. And so far, those crafting the budget have rejected it. The bill to fund the increase won endorsement by the House on an 89-10 to 10 vote last Friday, but then was killed by the House Appropriations Committee. And in the Senate Finance and Claims Committee last week, an amendment to add the money was voted down. Veteran Republican Senator Bob Keenan of Big Fork offered and voted for the amendment and says it died because a select group of people working on the budget have decided it doesn't fit. What happened to these people from all over the state of Montana that might have a good idea? Some people that might have good productive solutions are not part of the solution and they're not given an opportunity. The game has already been fixed. Shortly before the Senate panel voted on amendments to the budget bill, it took a break and committee members met privately in their respective party caucuses to go over the proposed amendments. Sources told MTN News that members were advised which amendments should pass and which should not. Senate Minority Leader John Sesso, the ranking Democrat on the panel, says their meeting informed members on all of the amendments and where Democrats stood. Both Sesso and Republican Committee Chair Ryan Osmondson also say the meetings are an extension of talks that have been ongoing for weeks about the budget, with lawmakers, lobbyists, and the governor's office discussion from the day we start the legislature to the day we vote and whether that's in in caucus meetings whether that's in you know small groups of us meeting to decide certain issues it's certainly true that there is a limited number of legislators who are working hard in the evenings and 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 every day to try to shape it but at the end of the day we got to put the thing in front of our peers and both on the floor and in committee and do these amendments. Those not on the budget panels can try to amend the bill when it hits the Senate floor on Thursday. But once it leaves the Senate, it may be complete and end up going to the governor for his signature. Sesso and Osmussen say they believe the budget is in pretty good shape with compromises made on both sides. As for the assisted living money, it may be in there or it may not. But Sesso says it's just one of many program proposals that so far haven't made the cut. Everybody's going to leave this session with certain of their priorities unfunded. And then at the same time, uh, we're going to leave with a balanced budget where we try to meet as many of the critical needs of the state as possible. It's a difficult deal, and uh, we have to make tough choices. Reporting from the Capitol, Mike Dennison, MTN News.